What's going on, dude? Oh, perfect. How about you? Doing good. It's rainy and cold, but I'm alive. My life's good. My life's easy. So. Hell yeah, I mean, life is good eventually. Um. Yeah. Did you, by the way, get some feedback about the the podcast that we did for the first time? It's like fucking fabulous to be here for the ne- next uh, second time. Oh, dude! Everyone loved it. Everyone. Really? Yeah. Well, I can go in and I can look at with my videos. I can look at who, how long people watch. You know, like mm-hmm. you, a, a video might have like, you know, you could have a thousand views on a video, but if people only watch it for ten seconds, it's you know, it's whatever. Right. On, on so on average, people watch my podcast for like five minutes. Some of the better ones they'll watch for like ten minutes. The average for yours is like. 55 minutes which is Ooh, like shit. literally like like 500 percent over any other podcast so yeah Man, I told, it's like the biggest compliment that i got in the last two months <laughs> yeah yeah dude it, everyone loved yours man so i yeah so i told you i put up questions i was like hey we're gonna ask my buddy t some questions and uh it got flagged like four times and then it got taken down and said it was inciting violence and i was like how the fuck how the fuck is that inciting violence? But I guess I get, rocks. Yeah, I guess I guess getting people to I don't know ask questions to a military. Me- it's Reddit, dude. It's it's fucking Reddit. It's you know they think they think words are are weapons. So you know I can't even imagine them. You know, hey, let's do a let's do a let's do a questionnaire with a uh, with a fucking killer. They'd be like, <laughs> you know. They're like, no, you're promoting. You're gonna, you're gonna provoke them to do more. I was like, do you have any? Fuck it, whatever. So I don't care. We're doing it anyway. So yeah, man. One of the least places, you know, that you can talk about serious stuff and not being flagged, like because you're kind of censored, right? Yeah. So it's like only places that it can happen, and if and of course, uh, people are dumb everywhere. Yeah. People are stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So. No, so I don't. I, unfortunately, I don't have any questions for the, from them. But you said you had some questions from uh, from Reddit, right? Yeah, right. So yeah, I, so let's uh, jump on them. Let's um, go. Ripple, uh, out to me, by the way, um, for people who are seeing this or uh, listening to this. Um, though I don't comment, I always read the comment section. Okay. So if you do send or uh, comment things in the YouTube channel or the other platforms that. Uh, um, that Thomas actually um, uh, publishing this podcast too, so I will see it, and I through him can you know can answer. So hell yeah, feel totally so free. Ask, so ask away. Awesome, I see it. Yeah. Great, and just just to ask everything. Yeah. And I told Thomas before, ask. Um, feel free, go dark. Yeah. It's for you to enjoy. Surely. Let's get fucking dark. Let's get, <laughs> let's get dark. All let's right. get gruesome. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know how, how how gruesome it is, like uh, uh, how it, it will be this round. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't care. When I'm, talking to Thomas, when I'm talking to Thomas before we start the podcast, so you know, I'm just there's no hello between us. We don't like ask each other how's it going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, it's fuck you. It's a, yeah, it's mostly like what's up, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. hear the dark, a dark joke? Yeah. Yeah. Get that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's there's. I suddenly a... texted it from the bed. I would just woke up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there's no format. Yeah, there's no formality. There's a yeah. We don't uh, we don't have a we don't have a. You and I don't have a professional relationship. It's 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 much more. It's much more. Fuck you, bitch. What's going on? <laughs> I love it. I wish my spouse was like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just make this one a bit tight. Perfect. Okay, so let's just I just hop to the question that I got. Um, So um, people uh, ask me how to get to a special unit in Israel. Okay. Now this question is um, I got it. I get it pretty often. Um, And it's people who want to do like Ali uh, is one. It's one of the things that Jewish people do uh, to get to Israel. And you know, it might be for work, to serve, and those stuff. And it turns out that people come actually to serve. Oh, really? It's pretty, 
pretty often. Yeah, they, they, they come and you know immediately join the army, or either they have a one year before uh, to to train, you know, on the Hebrew and language and those stuff, and and then join the army. Anyway, so about this thing, the ages that you can go are we usually uh, join in 18th or 19th. I was 18 when I joined. And people who do Aliyah, like newcomers, they can go between, mostly of them are 20, between like uh, 20 and uh, 26 is the latest that I got. So people ask me until age, what age you can join? Until about 26, 27 is pretty, you know, the upper limit. Um, but, you know, make sure that you are that you are fit. Yeah. Right. Even if it's not not an extreme uh, service, but still an active service when you be combat, be very very fit because the things that your body can do in eighteen are not the same thing that your body can yeah. do in twenty six. Yeah. And they ask me how to get into a specific unit, so you know they know the names. Let's say they know the Sayeret Matkal, they know the Shayetet, know the Duke Devan, all these uh, units. So when you already get to Israel and start the process. So what it looks like, you basically, you just need to contact um, FIDF or all the um, lone soldier platforms, okay? And those are, um, they have like very, very good, uh, you know, uh, way to, to absorb people, okay? So they, they will have your contacts and they have like people uh, who, who, even our family, we did as they call it, adopt a lone soldier. Okay. So he's not basically living in your home, but if you are a lone soldier, so you might be assisted by other local families or local soldiers okay. who are, you know, been through this already, and you can actually talk to them. And I, I ask them a question about finance and how you manage your own money um, while in service and in a new country. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the system is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you get, you know, money is not a problem. You won't be rich, um, but you won't be hungry. Yeah. All right, take care of your finance and about uh, the rent and all of those stuff. And they have certain buildings that are only for lone soldiers. So you actually will be in a company of lone soldiers. And uh, most of them are from US, but some from Europe and a little bit from South America and all the other continents. And uh, to be a lone soldier in Israel, I just I just go with it because it was, I was asked a lot. It's going like, um, so basically, basically you get here um, you contact FIDF and all the lone soldier platforms and they will just take care of your needs. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have a contact, a specific contact name and you, you th start learning the Hebrew through an Urban. Urban is basically, you know, it's just a course that you go afternoon after you, your daily work and learn Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. About that. And eventually, so you start go uh, through the exams, uh, physical exam, mental exam, psycho, psychometrist, and those and all those stuff. And to get to a specific uh, a specific unit, you need to ask. Okay. Okay. You to get there, and those cuts you do before you join the army, right? Some of of the cuts, like some of the exams, to go, you know, to get into a better place. Let's call it a better unit. Some of them you do before the army, and some after you join. Okay. I mean, some before you were in the soldier and then some are after you soldier. Let's say myself, and I will share my story later because I noticed that I didn't do it on our first <laughs> podcast. Um, myself, I just did, you know, the um, some before and some after, and I didn't pass most of them. All right. So I didn't join the elite forces. Let's say the super duper units. I just didn't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I joined to, to be a regular uh, paratrooper. All right. And inside the paratrooper, as you start, you have a an option to go, you know, just to be in the battalions and the brigades or, you know, going to the to be the special forces inside mm -hmm. and you can advance. And I was asked, what's the cut like? And when I say cut, do you also use this word in English? The cut, the cut, from the cut exams. Yeah, the cut is. Yeah. What do you like how to make the cut? Is that what you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It means it, from the exam, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, yeah, same word. All right. Um, so, so when you try to get to your unit, eventually you do all the all the exams, which are you know not hard. You know, just physical. If you breathe, if you're I don't know 
um, your torso is good, back is good, knees are good, all those stuff. Then you have like profile ranks. So 97 is is the highest, and then you have a few ranks. This thing is changeable. Okay. Okay. Because myself before the army, like a month before, I broke the uh, a collarbone. All right, and I had a surgery. Eventually, so my profile rank went down immediately, and then I improved it because I've been to a, psych- a, a therapist and and went to you know uh, to doctors to and asked to improve my profile. Okay. So to be in an elite unit, you need the highest uh, profile rank. Okay. But this thing is improvable. Okay. All right. Okay. I've been asked about glasses. Glasses, um, is it an, an issue? Okay, if you do laser, <laughs> I also have a glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, uh, it depends on your number, all right? And if you have a very, very big number, you need to consider being a combat because it's not easy, let's say. Um, we actually take glasses on operations and wars. Right. Get that? Because the eye contacts are very hard with, uh, with dirt mm-hmm. and dust. Man, if it gets in your eye, it's it's yeah. just it always gets in your eyes and it's yeah. just bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So we actually prefer wearing glasses. <laughs> so okay. that you, I might see my friends with the face mask and fucking glasses on, looking like a Jewish killer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so a uh, yeah, glasses. If you have a very uh, bad sight consider it please or you can do laser a uh, laser works and it's uh, will not harm your profile uh, some stuff like uh, let's say you have a if your sight is pretty good but you still use the glasses let's say you know just for focusing so you might have the highest profile rank with a little lot that says dude wears glasses dude wears glasses <laughs> right. so yeah. it's it's not that bad yeah okay so i would what, uh, a lot, what, uh, no, what, a what are uh, what are combat glasses like what do you, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't wear these just, uh, you don't wear these when you're going out killing fucking terrorists right <laughs> i'm gonna show you uh my myself i actually do um i just i just use my own i have like a a cheap version i have a good glasses that they take back at home and a cheaper one that actually looks like yours that what i when I, I do go that i do take when i go out to operations and they yeah they look similar yeah but do, are they um, are they like strapped on? Do they have no, some... no, no, the same. Really? You can put a strap, but it's the same. Really? <laughs> I thought you would have yeah. to have them like goggles almost. I feel like if you're going out and doing an operation, you want something that's like strapped to your head. So the thing is, uh, specifically with all those uh, things that strapped to your head, man, having a, a face mask and helmet and night uh... vision. So many stuff are so bulky. Yeah. So everything that goes on your eyes, you need you know very uh, need to be very very comfortable on you, and they know it. You know all the high ranks. They know that you need to. Maybe it doesn't look the best. Yeah. But, but it's for you to to operate and be comfortable yeah. eventually. Yeah. Is it? Do you do you have to get used to wearing night? What what what's night vision like? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, let's. I'll go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, let's keep like, going with your questions. Let's go with your questions. <laughs> Oh, I love night vision. And so glasses, I just asked about it a lot. Uh, you're good. Um, yeah, I just went for it. Bad, if you have a very bad sight, consider it. Um, everybody in the army uses glasses. Everybody goes on wars with glasses these days because it just, you know, to keep your uh, sensitive parts Okay. Uh, against sharp nails and dirty bombs. Okay, okay. So everybody eventually goes with the glasses that are... Uh, Plastic. So yeah. even if you have very good sight, you will still have wear glasses to pro- uh, protection. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Night vision. Um, there are a few types. There are um, when we train with the Marines, they had like one eye, and we have also um, one eye and two eyes. All right. So the thing that goes on one eye, this for the you know for uh, for a new guy that just just you know trying to to use it. And it's like it it just melts down your brain. Like one eye is seeing and the one eye is dark but sees like regularly uh, regular <sighs> and it's pretty really, really weird. But man, the thing is if, if you look to the sky with night vision, the technology itself it's called um starlight booster. Oh yeah. They, all the green stuff that you see in movie yeah. is the this well, it's called starlight booster. It just boosts the starlight that that you see. Okay. Right. 
So, so if you look to the sky and and you see like the and you look to the Milky Way, man, you see like thousands of stars. Really? Cool. That's badass. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think about that. That makes sense because it's it's just amplifying the minimal light that's there. So yeah, if you look up, you can just fucking see everything. Yeah, and and man, night vision is great because um, when you're just uh, you know in uh very updated army with updated gear not vision is the the way to go because you have like tons of other features that you can use let's say you have a pointer let's say you know a laser mm -hmm. but there's also an infrared laser or just uh you know a laser that you won't see only on night vision and it's so easy because you can point to other people like hey look at that and you point at it okay and uh, you know, and in dark no one will see it so no one else sees yeah. it but everyone with the night vision on sees it Hell yeah, and that's for very very good to go. Best gear. Fuck yeah, is it? Or it actually might be connected to your sight, so you want you don't have to look through your scope, but you can point at the target with, with a pointer that is attached to your let's say with the attached to the barrel or where you just hold your rifle or submachine gun, and it's very very easy. You just see the the dot you know being um, being thrown at the target. Mm -hmm. it's, and you look forward and you you don't have to you yeah. know to hold the sight to your eyes yeah you can just look through this that's crazy yeah yeah very comfortable have you uh have you so have you been in battle with uh have you ever been like uh yeah have you ever like been in an ambush or you're fucked up some terrorists while while wearing your night vision mm in the ambush that we've been through specifically i wasn't because they didn't need that okay uh, we were in an open area that is pretty lit up and the thing is you know not everything is perfect right yeah so if something if something flashes at you um so it might you know turn on and then you just you know you pick the the night vision um uh gear up and man you're fucking blind yeah because you've got the light being projected to your eye and suddenly you're blind. Yeah. So this we use sometimes one eye for the mind to synchronize. And and I didn't need that in urban places because you have the street light pretty good. But in wartime it's man, it's only night vision. Okay. Okay. All right. Um all right, next. Um special unit. Oh, so I wanted to share a little bit of my story. Yeah. Like we like jumped uh, he, uh, back and forth uh, in the first podcast, but and going for me to the army, you know, was kind of a luxury. Mm -hmm. So well, it's mandatory; everybody goes. And and the thing is that you know some people are super motivated to go, you know, all the way, and whatever you'll give them, they will take. And some are not, and it's good, you know. So you can choose between kind of two branches: either logistics or either being combat. Okay. You don't have to go combat. If you if you're a smart person, you even shouldn't. You know, you can do all the cyber stuff. Computer is a big thing in the IDF, and it's actually will you know it will boost your career mm -hmm. when you finish the army. Mm -hmm. Tons of people who do computers in the army, cybersecurity, are have you know in the moment they finish the army and they're like 21. Yeah, they have a great to go all around the place. Yeah, doesn't doesn't they can, is. Whatever. Israel or Mossad? What what is the? Does they have a really they have a really top notch unit eighty two hundred? Is that yes. it? Yeah, it's. I read a book about the NSA, and they talked about unit eighty two hundred. And yeah, when you come out of the military, if you have that on your resume, you can get a job anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. And even even inside of Israel, when it's like you know the market is kind of saturated because we have tons of them mm -hmm. you still to go everywhere you go people will look for this kind of talent okay so if you're sharp and you're looking for for service in idf and you actually have a degree let's say and you want to be combat think about it as you know as a career booster maybe not being combat but being one of these kind of you know it's called logistic but it's actually doing you know very very important stuff mm -hmm. and you know just being in a computer company perfect uh, this one goes deep you know myself i don't know all the new units inside it's kind of secret mm -hmm. and i don't know it itself but everywhere you go you know um you know to code or you know just to operate i don't know uh, logistics uh, or you are an air mechanic um electrical engineer a rocket scientist all of those professions 
some people come, you know, when they are like 20 something mm -hmm. to the army and they have a degree already, totally good to go with logistics. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. totally good to go. They will find something to do with your talent, and it might be, you know, very, very um, worthwhile for you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So I recommend it. Okay. Okay. I, and if you still want to be combat, so you always can. Okay. Right. So you don't lose it. Okay. And then moving inside the kind of the the army. So people ask me like, if you get to, you want to get to a good unit, but you go, you don't get it. What happens with you next? Right. So, um, if you try to get to a to the special forces and you don't make it, let's say you do, you don't pass the exams, you went, uh, you probably will get to the brigade. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say the like the Marine Corps. Imagine like like this. You know, like the kind of more simple soldier, the grunts. Sure. Um, and it's not bad either, but it's a very very different service. Mm -hmm. They do um, harder stuff. Being a grunt in Israel is is it says like. Let's say, you know, complicated cities like Hebron. So you just need to keep it, you know, you just need tons of uh, patrolling mm -hmm. and daily security stuff. Um, and um, mostly patrolling and those kind of stuff. All the borders, you know, they use the brigade people to um, to keep it. Mm -hmm. So mostly we'll do this uh, in wartime. Depends when you are. You might get in or you might uh, not. Okay. Might not go in. Okay. So, so a lot of people you know that are newcomers, um, and you get in the brigade, and you, you know they kind of you know it sucks for them because they didn't get what they want. Um, so again, you need to consider. You need to consider before you come. Maybe you will not be in a in the best unit in the world, mm -hmm. and it might, not, and the odds are against you, and you might get to this brigade, and some people you know just don't like it. So yeah, be ready for this. It's a very different service. Uh, tons of my friends being, you know, just being a regular soldiers, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, treated differently. They don't have the best budget. Uh, they don't have the best training. Um, not the best food in the world, um, and not the best missions. You know, eventually, you a soldier want to do stuff mm -hmm. and to feel important, and mm -hmm. not always the best missions. But still, myself, I believe. Uh, that if you look at you know at the whole perspective, whole perspective, in in just um like what will be your intakes from the whole service? I still think it will be, you know, it will make you tougher. And about uh, pros and cons, that was actually my next question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so how I got there? So I tried to get to the elite. Uh, didn't make it. Um, get to us the regular brigade of the paratroopers, and from there I, you know, I just I got advanced. So, uh, so I joined. You know, I was like whole uniform. I was a soldier already, and and you know, I've been asked that like you know, there's one night that would they wake you up and you have to choose. You can choose if you want to, you know, stay asleep, and or you know, go into the to the next final exam and to get to a, a better unit. Then you, and you don't even know like where you're getting in. Really? Right, so you cannot aim. you can ask for, but there's a few option, and they uh, kind of know this, but you know, but nobody knows, and you know they, they yeah, you can just take the exam, roll the dice, yeah, uh, ask what you want, uh, where you want to get, yeah, and you, you can do this, and it, this is like in two at night, right? <laughs> so they just wake you up in the <laughs> middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, and the funny thing, so I told the the dude that was uh, sleeping above me, you know, in the bed. I will. I told him man, because I was like after the surgery and I wasn't uh, sure that it's for me this mm -hmm. one. So I told him when when everybody wakes up, don't wake me up, man. I, I just don't know when. Don't want to wake up. Yeah. Who woke me up? This backstabbing. <laughs> yeah, backstabbing bitch. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, he's totally a bitch. And so I just woke up, uh, stood with all the people who you know. I was like, oh shit, uh, you know what? Let's take this fucking Let's exam. It. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's not hard as they seem, uh, you know, like uh, it's exhausting, right? Yeah. It's a uh, the final the the cuts, all right, the physical exams. It's always uh, it's between three days to seven days that you don't have like human rights. You don't have human rights. <laughs> <laughs> you like you you barely sleep. You sleep deprived all the time. 
you share a can of tuna with a friend, uh, you sprint, you crawl, um, um, you need to do, you just, you mostly sprint and crawl and do hikes with the stretcher. Yeah. This is like most of it. So if people ask like, what's the exam like this? It's, it's like this, you have some hills and you go up and down, up and down on the hills with stretcher. Yeah. Jeez. Fuck that. Sprint and crawl. Fuck that. Sprint. And and you don't even buy it, don't need to be stressed if you you know if you start this you know and being anxious about other people being better be, uh, than you because they run fucking marathons because who fucking cares after ten sprints everybody are the same everybody's exhausted everybody's yeah. sleep deprived it's start being mentally like super super fast so so I I would fail out immediately <laughs> I would fail out immediately because I need my sleep I'm a little I'm a little girl if I don't get my sleep. I'm cranky. I'm <laughs> angry at everyone. <laughs> but that's the thing that everybody's like this. I mean, yeah. everybody loves. Sleep. There are no people who doesn't like. This. Even Benjamin Netanyahu loves sleeping. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> everybody loves it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everybody. And if you are either, and again, if you're fit or not, eventually after ten sprints, everybody are you know with the ton out. You know, <laughs> fucking yeah. exhausted. Yeah. So, I, listen, Thomas. I have seen so many people. You know. You know that those tattooed and bulky guys, they just you know get kicked off very very fast. Yeah. Right, but I saw people who were thin and shaking <laughs> and terrified. Yeah. And they fucking did that. They did it. And they fucking did it. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, and you know, and you just you finish the exam and then starts the course, and the course is like fifteen months. <sighs> so the course is what builds you up. Okay. Exam is just you know to see how how mentally prepared you are, and okay. that's it. Okay. Just about sprint. You don't have to come first. You don't have to. You just need to give your best all the time. And if you're not first best, but consistent, okay, you might stay there. Okay. So okay. So I, I will totally tell people don't be nervous about this one at all. People, you know, the tough people people break up first, and you know, people who are doesn't seem like they will make it might make it. Mm-hmm. So don't be nervous about it. Just Give your best constantly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right. Hey, can, can, can I can I use the bathroom? Do you care if I go use the bathroom? Yes, sir, you can. <laughs> All right. What were you saying about... You said... I, I, I had to type something, but I, you were saying something about Asians, and then you said shoot someone in the head? Oh, yeah. If, so, if you have an Asian coffin in front of you, you know, just shoot it. You know, you need to... If you have any, there, there's no a cure for these. There's no I'm sorry. A, a coffin. Oh, that that one is good. No, I what, don't know, but then it will. Uh, I didn't understand. Buried in a ground. It's good. What do you? I'm I'm confused. What you're talking about? If there's a coffin in front of you, shoot him in the head. No, an Asian. If there's an Asian in front of you, like yeah, who is coughing? A coughing. Oh, coronavirus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But this. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're saying if you see someone with coronavirus, just shoot him in the head. I just shoot him. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. Next one. We go on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I, like like the the level of the dark jokes that we go through. Yeah. Kind of on a, on a weekly basis. I'm not sure if your audience is even know ready for this. They might be you know taking their headphones off and be like. Fuck I'm not sure if I if I can take twenty war events with that. Then fuck them. I don't care. Then I don't want them here. They, if <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I don't. I'd, I'd rather have five subscribers and them like my videos than a hundred subscribe, hundred million subscribers and then be offended. Fuck them. We're going deep. <laughs> uh, people are offended. I really don't get that. Like, why would you get offended? It's the internet. It's, I mean, it's everything. It's because they don't have. <laughs> The people want struggle in their life, whether they know it or not. They want to struggle. They want a goal. They want to. You want to fight against some obstacle, whether you whether we know it or not. I think every human, deep down, we love a fight. You know, we love to accomplish something. And people that don't have any fights in their life, they make the fight. So they, uh, this guy offends me. I'm gonna get his Instagram taken down. That's a fight, whether you realize it or not. You you're you're setting up this this goal, and you want to con- and your goal, no matter how stupid it is, I want to get this guy's Instagram banned. That is that is a fight that you're taking. 
So I think people that don't have anything going on in their life, they've probably got a boring job, they're probably got nothing to do but watch TV and eat ice cream. Those are the they're people like that get it. Or something, no financial worries. Yeah, they 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 want to. They don't they don't have anything else going on, so they want to fight. So they're like, I'm offended, because they know whoever whoever's talking is going to be like, Why are you offended? Fuck you. There's their fight. So yeah, <laughs> fuck them. Well, this lame, but the the thing that you said about the people who want to have a struggle in your life, it's kind of beautiful, you know. It is. It's it relates to all the things that we talk about right now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's you, you, because the thing is, is is no matter what, life is a struggle. So you might as well find the struggle that you enjoy, because there's no such thing as no problems. I mean, maybe temporarily you can have it, you know, you could win the lottery, and you know, you don't have to do anything. But, you know, within a day or two, you're going to have new problems. You're going to have problems that deal with winning a lot. So it's there's there's you cannot get rid of problems. So you might as well choose the problems that you want to have. You know, for me, it's I need to find podcast guests. I got to, you know, set up times. I got to make sure the Internet's working. I got to record the video. I got to edit the audio. I got to always go take piss breaks. I got to, you know, I got to I got to turn the fan on. I got to make sure the lighting's good all problems but i mean they're good problems to have because if i don't have these problems i'm gonna have other problems so i might as well take the problems i want to have like you gotta fight so you might as well enjoy the fight you know and then there are crazy you motherfuckers know, like, like you that you, your fight is you want to go literally fight and go fucking kill isis and hezbollah and yeah D different kind of fight but hey it's still a fight <laughs> deep thoughts by the way very very deep thoughts about you know, because I'm I'm relocating to Asia doing sales. Yeah. And it will be refreshing you 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 mean you now to not do army stuff and, and stop fighting for a while. <laughs> yeah. And you know, take a break of all this mess and go into Asia. I th I I think it will be totally refreshing. But still deep thoughts about uh training the people that kill ISIS. Yeah. Because one day it will be in the past. I mean, come on, it will be in the past. And and to do it right now, to train the people that, that kills ISIS, it's it's very controversial. I told you last time, they can do nasty shit with your knowledge. Yeah. So it's it, it's not, you know, you are not heroic. You yeah. need to keep it secret. It's not that beautiful at all. Yeah. But still a deep thought about doing it. And, might, and maybe in the future, when ISIS will be over, like, yeah. you know, totally will be after it, like the Nazi regime has ended. Yeah. And suddenly everything who fought the Nazis are like heroes. Yeah. In retro. In retrospect. Yeah. Right? It's, it's quiet. You, they can't talk about it while it's going on. Yeah. Like the OSS sure. or the the first like American special ops, the Jedbergs, they were guys that would go kill Nazi leaders during the war. Um, yeah. And but they couldn't talk about it. You're right. Till after it. But. Dude, I feel like in the Middle East, it's never going to be completely gone. You get rid of, you know, you get rid of the Taliban and then you got Hezbollah. You get rid of Hezbollah, you have ISIS. I feel like you're going to get rid of ISIS and just something else is going to pop up. Do you feel that way or do you feel that it really can be stamped out and there can be peace? Or do you think it's what we talked about last yeah. time where it's not necessarily the military? People have to have a good life. They, they, can, they can fall on and then they won't join terrorist groups think it's that well i'm i'm talking from you know by my very narrow perspective you don't have a narrow perspective dude you're the, you you're you do special you you're 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 in a special unit in the israeli defense force you don't have a narrow view i have a narrow view i live in america i don't fight you don't have a narrow <laughs> mindset or a narrow experience you have the best experience for this shut up <laughs> But but I'm not, but I'm not them, you know. I'm not them, and actually, in the and eventually, <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. Oh, that's a very nice one. In in Israel, we do like this. You like you do like this. Yeah. And you in here you do either like this or either like this. You know this one? No. Oh, it's so funny. I'm gonna teach you. So you do like hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you do like hello. Hello. You take your middle finger and point it, and your opponent. Okay. Right? And you do it with the do it like opposite case. You do like like this. Like that? What with the opposite with the opposite case like I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing, man? Is everyone in Israel laughing at me right now? 
<laughs> so it's totally Israeli thing to do, you know. If you want to some, tell someone to fuck off, you like hey, on you. Fuck off, dude. So if I do that in Israel, yeah, am, like I, am I going to get my ass kicked if I do that in Israel? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. But you know, Russians do this, which is like very, very awkward, and you do like they point ah, Like every nation does it really? differently. It's I was going to say because if you were in America and you did this, people would just think you're stupid. They'd be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, it'd be like, are you, are you fucking, are you dumb? You know, yeah, did you grow up under power lines? You know, something like that. It's. I think that's for me, I'll bring so much, you know, funny, dark stuff. <laughs> I know, but maybe they do it like much differently. Yeah. But. Yeah, let's get back to questions. All right, all right. So the, the point that I was leading to and about, I, I would like, I would like, you know, to take all my, all that, those times that I talk to Palestinians and just locals in West Bank and those stuff, or to Egyptians from Egypt, or to um, you know uh, people from from Gaza who travel and those stuff, you know all these uh, encounters and all the, the my intakes from that. And listen, audience, people wanna fucking live and have their own life yeah. and family yeah. and make a living. They yeah. don't fucking care about holding rifles. Yeah. Those that you see. The fucking minority in every place, yeah. and people wanna open their farm, open their businesses, yeah. selling stuff, doing sex, um, yeah. and just make their make a living. Uh, yeah, have this a, is what people, the yeah. majority of Arab people from all types that you will ask, want to do this yeah. and don't want to hold AKs. Yeah, yeah, it's it's everywhere. That's what everyone wants. That's. Yeah, the, we talked about this last time. The vast, 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 vast majority of people, they want a job, they want a home, they want friends, they want a family, they want food, a cozy bed, grow old, die. Yep. We don't, it's not, we're not complicated creatures. As much as we think we are, we're really not. We want to, we want to wake up, go to a job, work hard, have a fight, have a struggle, have a good meal but, and go to sleep. <laughs> There's not a lot, man. We're pretty simple. But it's when oh, you, yeah. when, and, you when, when you take all that stuff away, though, that's when we get fucking crazy. That's when you get us true. putting on fucking masks and getting RPGs and let's go blow up a fucking military base. That's because when you take everything away, you got nothing. You got nothing to fucking live for. So fuck it. I'm... I'm going to fucking just, I'm going to inflict pain on you. You're going to feel my pain, right. right? Well, most of the time it doesn't even go deeper than that. And I will go through it. But the thing that I wanted to say is um, if you, the thing that I wanted to say is, so most people, you know, just want to make their own uh, living. Mm -hmm. But if they do do those nasty, sh those nasty shit and nasty stuff, it must be because of the fact that when you don't have opportunities and you don't have options and you can't leave your states, so it's like in Syria, it's very, very hard to get a visa out of. And it's not even easy to be a refugee anyway. So for for people, let's say, who shot the RPG on the American outpost, they got paid for that. Wow. And it's, low, you know, it's um, simple people. They are not, they don't have to be lunatics. They just get paid. And this is like, you shoot one RPG and it's your monthly salary. So from some people, okay. it's, it's kind of, you know, okay. they might be, I, I'm not sure, but they might be in their own head. Well, if I'm going to shoot one or two RPGs or do one ID on one uh, false tipping for uh, for Americans, I get paid some. It will help my family. I have a sick daughter and this is what I, I got to do. What you got to do. And I live in a shitty country. Jesus. Yeah, I, didn't, I never even thought about that. It's so there probably are some ideological psychos, but there's also probably people that are just like, here's a really dangerous thing, but yeah, I can go get a month, I can go get a, I can go get a month of food, rent, power. I just got to go do this one thing. I just got to go fire this one yep. RP or set up this, and maybe I'll die, but yep. you know, maybe I won't. Jesus, man, that's, that's, it's sad. It's, really it's sad. very, very sad. It's, but, but I, but I still resonate with them. Yeah. Yeah. No, you it, understand. It, you it, don't... it was like uh, our intake, like in last podcast, I resonate with them. And I was talking to one of my best, you know, um, um, uh, friends 
Um, and she was like, you know, we were talking about terrorists or something. And I tell them, yeah. And I, you know, we just throw in this on the air. I'm like, yeah, I feel for them. And she's like, what did you say? I said, well, I feel for them. You know, they're in a shitty country and they do need, they need to do nasty stuff. And she's like, well, like, what's your political view? Like, are you like super left wing or something? Like, why would you resonate with them? And I told her, no, I'm, I'm not left wing. And you're... my politi- political view doesn't matter. No, it's you're you just, just need to you're human. And understand you're human. Not people are ludicrous. They, yeah. they, the monas, the mon, you know, demonize them yes. for you to think they're crazy, but they are not. They're fucking like you and me. Yeah. And, and but I, in, a, in a different situation, in a very undecent place, in a, in a, doing in a, they got stuff. yeah, they got they got handed a really shitty hand. Yeah, yeah, it's got nothing to be. It's got nothing to do with being left or being right. It's you just you you sympathize. You go, I get it. You know, yeah, like, I get it. I just and, and she and she didn't get the fact that they resonate with them. She was like, you will resonate with terrorists. And I say, yeah, I do what I have to do, you know, eventually yeah. in, a, in the moment. Yeah, if you got to kill feel... him, you got to kill him. But like, yeah. yeah but yeah. It's the, the situation is sad. You know, don't forget that. It yeah. shouldn't be like this. Yeah, no. I prefer, I prefer to Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, it's, yeah. And it just, it's like one of my biggest intake, man. Biggest intakes. I feel for them. I resonate with them. I do what I need to do again, but people don't forget that. Yeah, they demonize the other side because this is what they do in every struggle. But probably just the man, you know, um, on the other side that you think is a ludicrous terrorist might just want to provide for to his family. In it, this one is might be his only option. Yeah. All right. Doesn't talk about you know the simple, you know, the simple guys, not like Baghdadi who yeah. lead the all the operation. Yeah. I people, people who hold the fucking rifle and need to go on a patrol and they told him, man, just one time shoot the RPG. Like just one time. And he thinks in his mind, well, I shoot this one time and I get, and I get, you know, get my home fixed. Yeah. Or I, I maybe do this two times and I'm totally good to go. Yeah. I might fly to somewhere else and, you know, start a new life. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife's pregnant. I got, you know, I can take her to the hospital. It's. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucked up. In places that you cannot go to hospital that easy. At yeah, all. yeah. And you're right. And that might be the only opportunity they have for money because they don't have an education. They don't have a special skill set. They don't. They're just. You're a thirty fifth. You're a thirty forty fifty year old dude with. You can't read or write. You don't even have fucking shoes, and it's just. Yeah, you've never even you've never seen a fucking television, you know, and someone not someone holds a an RPG tube and they go go shoot this all you got to do is do that here's food for a month month here's food for a month yeah why don't you yeah why wouldn't you do that yeah Yeah, i get it i mean and yeah i i really you know want to give this i i think if one of your audiences will just take that point and you know and embrace it it will make a change man Mm -hmm. yeah i agree it will make a change i absolutely agree and and other thing, okay, so um, let's just go on with the question yeah, I got. Yeah, let's um, go. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to skip this one. But uh, very, very interesting and, the, and a question that I like is like, is like, what's in it for me, okay. for people who want to be army? So they like, I want to join, but what will be my my intake so, and first of all i don't know it's your it's your own experience i have my own you have your own mm-hmm. right and i don't know where you're gonna start mm-hmm. but the thing that they can say and i'm pretty sure about this is there's a tons of pros and cons like everything in life but if you're a combat the pros gonna be more than the cons and the cons are just you know just you know um like in this moment, it sucks, right? So it, while training, it sucks. Or while you're patrolling, it sucks. Or you have like your super heavy gear at, at the summer or at winter, it sucks, mm-hmm. right? But you, you forget those parts and eventually you have this, it builds your toughness to an, to an, uh, to a level that you, 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 you just hit like a bar. And from there, you know, like all your life is much easier, really? right? Yeah. So you- let's, say, let's say we talk about the course. So the course is, 
uh, um, 15 months and in the special forces like after a few months you just so you sign a paper that you give up give up on your basic soldier rights like sleeping <laughs> it's fucking or eating uh, three meals a day you suddenly you don't you don't have the you right just, to you eat, just don't eat, get food eat, uh, yeah you just don't get food mm. and so you sign this shit and it's so hard yeah. i mean it's so hard myself i'm not the toughest guy in the world and if you see me walking around the street i'm, I'm look like everybody else yeah and i want to show myself that i'm a, that i'm a you know finished the curse i mean i mean you know like in the first day when everybody you know all those who who got to the unit you know who passed the exam so they all sit in the same you know room and there's one officer you know showing the graph about what's gonna come like so in this week so we do this and this week we do land navigation and this week is um um camouflage skill uh, shooting range uh, short shooting those stuff and and you also see like the level of the of the hikes that you're gonna do so it, it gets harder in time every week you go more you go farther right mm-hmm. and you have like so first week is like super soft is like six kilometers hike with some stretchers and you know and it's kids can do this but eventually it gets like to 56 kilometers per night plus seven kilometers of stretcher and i'm looking at this and i'm like i cannot walk 60 kilometers a day i did never did this i I don't think i don't i'm not sure that i can do this (laughs) right dude i walk a mile and i'm finished i walk one mile i'm done <laughs> yeah and, uh, uh, so i don't know if uh if you're most of the audience are us so i would just say 60 kilometers is like a marathon and a half all right you get me by distances and 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 it goes even you know even harder than this so all this thing is like a lie and you go like much further eventually <laughs> you go farther than <laughs> that? fuck that dude I, so the final exams are the are the it's like a month of a half of torture all right it just pure torture it's a uh, it's a month and a half that you barely you barely get home to refresh i think maybe once or twice and every week or two weeks is a is the exam is a whole week mm-hmm. right so if you if the cut was hard so the final exams are like 10x 20x kind of you go so sleep deprived and let's say the the navigation exam so it's going a marathon uh each day you you navigate the marathon by yourself from memory with a 50 percent body weight in a backpack and you do this for three nights every three night every night you, you need to go america and in, in physically in israel you cross israel you go through the mediterranean sea to galilee sea um in a in a in three nights <laughs> you cross the country jesus dude and you know you're the yeah. the the recruiting office is going to contact you and they're going to tell you to stop doing this podcast because you're making it sound terrible <laughs> their 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 numbers are going to go down they're going to people are going to watch this podcast and be like fuck that <laughs> But, you know, actually, some people hear this stuff and they're like, you know, let's go get it. And I'm like, hell yeah, you know, let's go get it. Yeah. You'll do it eventually. Because, Thomas, if I just drop you in this situation, you're like fully on uniform, vest, weapon, backpack, and you just need to do it. And you're like, oh, you know, shit. Right? But what other option you have? What what other option you have? That's true. In the same situation. But picking up your hand and saying, I'm quit. You can quit before you start or in the finish line, but in the middle, when you sleep in a bush, you cannot quit. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, you can quit, but it doesn't matter. You're still out there. Like, <laughs> you know, it's. Yeah. You can, you can quit in the middle of the desert. It, you're still in the middle of the desert. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's. <laughs> no one's going to come get you, so you might as well finish it. You have to finish it. You have to finish it. Be, or, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, some some weeks they're so hard that you feel, <laughs> but the opposite case, like like this. <laughs> you look so white ass yeah, that when I, you do I this. Know, I know, I'm, I know. Dude, I don't even try to hide it. I'm, I'm, I don't even try to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, 
man, it, it, it's just so hard, but you just, you're just there, you know, you're just in the moment. So you don't really give a fuck. You just, you just try to finish everything. Like, Even like the best warriors, they just try to finish. Yeah. It's, you know, like, they say, I'm going to finish this week. And then the next week starts and, uh, and they say, I'm going to finish this week. And the most excellent people just, you know, f- finish it in with the best grade. You know, they never get the best. They get the best points or they're the fastest or the just the best and the thing that specifically is the exit I'm for. But man, there it's don't hallucinate, you know, don't don't think it's like, you know, highly motivated people. No, people are people and they when it's hard, so it's hard. And then they their knees hurt, so their knees hurt and they get unmotivated. Mm-hmm. But they finish. Yeah. Yeah. It's they finish. It's, and that's the difference. Yeah, it's just it's like Jocko, you know, it's just like you just, you just got to do it. It's just embrace it. Just, you know, good, good, do it. <laughs> grab, grab your gun, reload, recalibrate, re-engage, and go get it. Get after it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's some truth. You, you know about that. If you're Jocko Willing, if Jocko is seeing this, I mean, I mean, thank God if he's seeing this and but if he does, so just think about the fact that he, when someone hears Jocko podcast in his headphones, yeah. so he allows Jocko to be the voice in his head. <laughs> and if you're a fan, <laughs> and if you're a fan, so, so you're like, so you wake up and you hear like Jocko's whispering behind you like, good, good, get after it. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 you, if you get on Twitter and tweet at Jocko, He'll respond. I I, I, yeah, tw- I, heard I, I tweeted at him. Like, like, one time I tweeted at him. I just said like I said like Hey Jocko, like you know, like th- like thanks for all the motivation. I'm working hard. And he said Get after it, Tom. And I was like, Jocko, talk to me. Yeah, yeah. No, he'll, he'll respond, dude. He's he's cool about it. He'll he responds to everyone. I love I love his uh, con. Uh, He's uh he's tough. I love him. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. And, all right. Oh, oh. So the thing that I wanted to say, um, the point. What's in it for me for oh, people yeah. who joined the army? Yeah, we have an answer. A lot, a lot for you. All right. And again, if you finish, and if you did in in combat service, because this is the only thing that I can that I know, right? So the pros. That be injured you might get killed i hope not and but you do get killed so your family gets money so fuck that and um if you die the pros if you die your family gets money oh yeah no i get i, I yeah actually that's probably that's probably the standard right it's probably what it is in every country yeah yeah i, I told my officer to calculate my you know my organs in the dark web and this is the amount of money that my money will get <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Jesus. So, Calculate my organs on the dark. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> <It's fucking dumb. laughs> and, um, right, so, but, no. Uh, Thomas, again, so the, the pros, the pros. Yeah. We're going to talk about the pros. Yeah. So, it goes like this. You get so tough, all right? It's so hard. That, like, when you go through hard stuff, you get to a level where it just... You up, like, you get better. Yeah. And since there, everything will be easier, right? So let's say you switch to civil life, you finish your your term, and you you know you 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 a salesman doing sale calls, right? And it might be a little bit nervous, but still in the back of your head, you like it's much easier than than thing I've been through. Yeah, it's much easier. Yeah, everything, everything. You know, hard time in relationships, trying to get a an apartment, uh, being in debt, all those stuff. Things are much, you have much of, and you like seeing things from a perspective, like from up there and then you like say, it could be much, much harder. I physically have been in harder situations, so I know what it feels like. Yeah. This one is not that hard. Yeah. So I'm going to just handle it. Yeah. I'm going to just work with it. Yeah. No. It's it, not comfortable. Yeah. All but my, I did uncomfortable things. Yeah. 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 All my friends that were in the military, they're all... You know they're not in the military anymore, but whatever it is they do, they don't complain about it, and they do it very well. And like I'll ask them, be like, dude, you that you know, 
working a shitty job or doing whatever and they're just like yeah yeah man it's you know it's it's whatever you know because they they went and fought in iraq they went and did yeah you know they were grunts and they're just like yeah this is it's whatever yeah, and, and one of the things that are hard to switch to save a life, so suddenly you work with people who didn't serve, right? And they get, uh, I mean, it's just in my head, and I just, I'm just throwing it, but so many people are so soft, Yeah, Thomas. I and mean, you probably know those people who, you know, they they have just, you know, this day is like work, is, is the papers are loaded, and they get just frustrated from doing this, and, you know, they start... They start co- uh, finish cooperating. They just cannot, you know. It's they they off. They it's uh they mentally break down. Yeah. And you bring the back energy back home to the family. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, people are so soft. I mean, yeah. it's just paperwork. It's just sale calls. It's just serving customers. I mean, even if you have a ton. Yeah. Just. I mean. Just do it. It's harder. To, yeah. I mean. People are getting shot at right yeah. now somewhere in the in the other side of the world. I mean, yeah. And you have to something paper, you fuck face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's... And I work with, what? Because I, I work with tons of people who didn't serve and I'm always thinking about this. And you know, and I I kinda you know, I will not tell them to their face because <laughs> they will they will get insulted because yeah. they're still not tough, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They will get in something, but in my head, I always think, "Oh shit, people are so soft." Yeah. And you know what? If I if I have a spouse who like you know served in a very very good place, it's a bonus for me. Yeah. Because you know that that she would be she would have this little mental toughness. Yeah. She can go through stuff, and then when it's high stressful, so she can work with it. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. So, pros from the army. A lot of pros. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Are you uh, are you ever gonna move to America? I don't know, but I'm totally trying, gonna visit. <clears throat> I'm gonna visit Nashville. Got so many recommendations about the music. The South, Texas, and New Orleans, yeah. and Colorado for the weed. You know. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. When uh. <laughs> When 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 my when my pot in five years when my podcast is huge and I've got a million subscribers and I get a studio, I'm gonna I'm gonna hire you to to do my security. Okay, I want you and Nah, I'll, man. Yeah, I want you. I want I'm you. A, and I'm gonna be like, I will be such a such a civilian dude that you will not notice that I serve. I don't no, care. I'll be like, up like regular people doing yeah. regular stuff. That's what I want. I want you to blend in. I want I want you yeah, to Yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you and uh, I'm a hard... What? I'm very trying to. Yeah, you get I'm you, trying to. Yeah, get you and your uh you and your friends. You guys move here. I'll give you a job when my when my podcast is huge. I'll hire you guys. You guys will be my compound security when I live out in the middle of the fucking woods and I'm crazy. <laughs> I want you guys to ring around the property. Well, you know, um I have some contact in US, you know, and people, you know that will be hidden to host people that I, I met uh-huh. and tell them if you if you're from a country that shots rifle rifles you know and gun laws are you know and you can you know go and do a, a just go outside and do like a shooting range like just like this you yeah. know there are some <clears throat> states are more true more uh, some are less mm-hmm. I'm just a I'm, I'm really yeah. looking up to, to shooting those rifles yeah yeah you have everything I mean, it's so sick that the regular guy can get a rifle and not just a handgun. In America, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I have a handgun and this is like extreme, but the rifle, I mean, what the fuck? Dude, I bought a, I bought a, I bought a pistol on my 21st birthday and like, six, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally on my birthday, I went with my brother and I got a, I got a, a nine millimeter and then, and then like a, okay. like a year later I got a, uh. I got an AR. I got an AR-15. <laughs> yeah, that's escalated quickly. Oh well, yeah, it escalated quickly. Yeah. No, I ended up. I ended up. I ended up selling them. But yeah, I was. It escalated quickly because I. I was instantly like, I wonder how many more guns I can get. <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I have. I have some. I. I won't name them, but dude, I have. I have some friends with a ton of guns. 
<laughs> oh yeah <laughs> huge fucking guns the guys that live out in like the middle of okay. nowhere yeah yeah in the south in georgia i have some friends that live up in the mountains they have they have closets you open them up and it's just racks of rifles just <laughs> yeah and it's just like yeah man we're ready for the revolution <laughs> it's the fucking crazy but i love them they- it's kind of sick, but I love this fact. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what makes America America, man, is it's, you know, pros and cons. But uh, you'll never have a dictatorship here. You can't pull it off. You got 300 million people with 500 million guns. It, America has 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's guns. It's Really? <laughs> yeah. Look it up right now. Sheesh. Look it up right now, dude. Five percent of the world's uh, population. Yeah, and I think, that's a disturbing fact right there, man. Yeah, and it's I think it's yeah, I think it's over half a half a billion guns in the United States, and <laughs> yeah, and I think I think the the most I think the most recently updated number is in civilian hands in the United States. There's over one trillion rounds of ammunition. Oh wow! A trillion with a T. America. Woo! America. Woo! <laughs> Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Uh, America, America. I, yeah. I kind of love you. I love you guys. Yeah, I love you guys. Hey, we love Something you. Something American. And they're just people that easy to talk to. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up with Americans so easily. I don't know. Such a easy conversations. But... Americans have this thing for, let's say, if I offer them, let's say, to drink something, and I, again, they came to the Middle East, right? And I offer them something, they have, they tend to say no for the first time, but they actually want it. All right. So if I'm offering, let's say, yeah. a coffee, so they're like, nah, it's okay. And I'm like, no, no, I mean, I mean, I make coffee, I, I make for myself. That's what I'm going to do for you. And they're like, no, it actually would be great. Yeah. And I'm like, so just say it the first time. I mean, fuck off. What yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, I guess, yeah, I never thought about that because I grew up here. I've never left, but it's. Um, I think it's like a. It's almost like a polite thing. It's like so. Let's say. Let's say I go to your house. Just, hear me out. Let's say I go to your house and let and you, you know, it's. Being polite, you're the host, and you say, "Tommy, do you want a cup of coffee?" It's like very nice for you to say that, but if I'm your guest, like I don't. I don't want to make you feel like obligated. So I say like, thank you for offering. And now, so it's, so it's, you were nice enough to offer it. And like, so that's like, that's like a, that's like a welcoming gesture to me. Um, But Mm -hmm. I, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to make you do it. And then if you say no, like, no, I insist. And then if I really want the cup of coffee, sure. Yeah, I'll get it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a nice, nice thing on both sides. Like, if the person doesn't offer offer something like you know it's you don't want to be awkward and ask and at the same it does it make it's fucking stupid it's stupid it's <laughs> but you know what actually as i'm explaining i'm realizing how stupid it is like fuck that if you want a cup of coffee just ask like you know if you want to drink just ask but uh oh yeah yeah you know we also have this thing that you don't you know you don't feel comfortable let's say to say yes all the time so would you you'd be like no but you actually want it yeah that's it. so we do have it but man in in israel and middle east if you if you are good at being hosted and you're kind of a yes man you know just people offer you stuff and you're like well yeah why not yeah it would be so so fun for you to get around man yeah. so fun just... and i tell you i met egyptian people one egyptian guy lately actually and he says that you know he's kind of a yes man in here, you know. And people, you know, ask him, tell him, let you can you can sleep at my place and all mm-hmm. stuff, and let's go out a drink. And you know, he actually he have the time to go out, and he feels so welcome. I'm fuck, it's fucking fabulous. So I love it, Egyptian, and they know that, and we know that he's Egyptian, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I if I ever come to Israel, I'll just make sure I always say yes. Yeah, man. And, and, be, and, yeah. Unless unless they're trying to recruit me into the army. And then I say no. <laughs> Will you? Uh, like if there's a different universe and you're like 20 with the hormones going on and you're like, you know, let's get some jacked <sighs> up. And do that <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Yeah, you well, feel? If I was 20. Yeah, when I was 
when I was in college and I was 21 and I was working out for like an hour a day and I was fucking crazy. Yeah, I thought about I thought about joining. I want remember when I was 21, I thought about it, I was like, I wonder if I could become like a Navy SEAL like Jocko. I was fucking crazy. I'm happy I didn't. I don't know. I might have really enjoyed it then. But I look back at myself when I'm 21. And that's not someone I would want to fuck with, man. 21 year old me was fucking crazy. I mean, like legitimately <laughs> crazy and like crazy and like followed through with like what I said I would do. I'd be like, I'm going to fucking do this thing. And then I would do it. And it was just I was like a goddamn bowling ball, man. I'm I look back at it and I'm now like, oh, now I get why so many people thought I was weird because <laughs> I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So uh I'm sure in 10 years I'll be looking back at me now and being like, you dipshit, you're still crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, as I'm doing a podcast with a guy in Israel with a mask on and we're talking about shooting terrorists. <laughs> or just shooting regular people. Or, yeah, let's not shoot regular people. That's, that's, let's not do that. <laughs> but. <laughs> we shouldn't, we shouldn't. Um, all right, all right. Back on track. Back we on. Have, we have questions. questions. Let's go. Yeah, questions. Um, oh, um, I was talking about, I was in the middle of uh, saying about a, a pro. Pros and cons. Serving. Yeah, myself, I was a non-professional before I joined. It was, you know, totally like barely finished high school. Yeah. Right, I was just surfing all this time or either working. Yeah. So I got my profession. I'm, I'm a sapper. I can handle IEDs. I mean, I don't defuse, I mostly like offensively, but all this thing, uh, you can be a shooting instructor and if you're a combat, so it's it called the jobs, right? So so you start, so every every combat has its own profession. And men, uh, some of these stuff can be, you know, um, a really uh, things that looking into uh, in civil life, let's say if you're a sniper or a sniper uh, commander, mm -hmm. you can totally instruct. Yeah. In other places. Yeah. You're just a sharpshooting commander, warfare commander, or you do all the Krav Maga stuff. Uh, tons, tons, tons of job offers outside. Yeah. And high paying. If you are stupid enough to do like uh, things in Africa like me, like I wanted. Yeah. It's very high paying. You know, you need to calculate the risk and have a good exiting plan. Yeah. Yeah. You said you said you're a sniper. No, myself, I'm a sapper. A, a sapper. I was doing all the all the IEDs. Oh, so, okay. So, oh, yeah. In America, it's a, an EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Is that what you were? Uh, I talk about um, just the uh, um, improvised explosive devices. Yeah. So you would you would like remove oh, you would, you would remove those. So I don't defuse. I do it offensively. So I make them. Oh, you make bombs. I make them, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't defuse them. I make them. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. There's no way I'm defusing, man. I'm not yeah, defusing. no way I'm defusing that shit. I'm setting them up. I'm setting them. I'm blowing some motherfuckers to pieces. <laughs> so the thing is, actually, I can I just handle bread for a minute? Yeah. I was uh, rewarded for for doing like oh it would sound so weird but kind of humane bombs right so not everything let's say who j just jumps the border between the, between the west bank and israel deserves to die not everybody yeah. most of them are just you know illegal workers kind yeah. of so but all the all the not improvised but official explosive devices of the army are you know are, are violent yeah. they could vapor as a man yeah and and as the unit or a, a one that he's a specialist in what he does. So I was just, you know, improvising, actually improvising and getting tested and getting approved by high ranks to do devices that don't kill people, but do, let's say, choking gas or, you know, just surprising okay. Okay. Or, or or pressure plates that uh, someone, you know, who just sneaks in because he want to because he's a drug trafficker and we want to catch him. So this one, you know, explodes, but doesn't hurt him at all. How do, how does it not hurt oh, him? Then, yeah, but it's but it gives up his place, and we see the explosion, and then we can oh, okay, okay. reach out. Okay. But he's not injured. Okay. All right. So not everybody <clears throat> deserves to die, and we were just using our skills 
um, to just to make most of it, out of it. And I was getting rewarded to do. Uh, I was kind of the first one to do the humane stuff. Oh fuck yeah, that's cool, dude. That's cool. So snaring the fence. By by the way, the fence itself between West Bank and Israel. So snaring it or uh, trapping it. Yeah. And yeah, and it's actually and it protected people and it helped people and I'm yeah I'm glad. Hey man, that's awesome. It's so it's just so it's more like a it's more like a notification, like you see the explosion go off and it's like there he is. So yes, what it what is this? Is it like um. They step on something. Is the actual um, is the actual explosive like farther away? So, or is it is it, it just is it just small? So it's just like loud, but it's not enough to hurt someone. Well, there's a tons of uh, there's different stuff that you can use. So some of the of the explosives are not uh, you know not harmful, but they do a a loud noise. Or let's say a flashbang. Mm-hmm. If a, flash, a flashbang, you know, lands nearby yeah. your feet, it will not hurt you. But you know, but you're yeah, you get stunned, and it's a uh, it's but it's loud. So we can use the same. We could uh, we actually use one time flashbangs, and just um, snaring the fence itself with flashbangs. You know, with a wire kind of something, mm-hmm. kind of a MacGyverish stuff. Yeah, and yeah, and it worked, and yeah. it worked, and um, and we just got awarded. So yeah. the thing is, um, and about the point that I wanted to say, so I was, I had no profession back at home and then I started doing this. So I know eventually that every, in every aspect of my life, every time I could go to the police and be a police, you know, yeah, you, um, you could make it, bomb yeah, 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 or actually the shoes stuff. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you ever been like flashbanged? Have you ever had one thrown at you? Is that part of training? Uh, I think in uh, in training, yeah, but it's kind of a. I, I think it'd be it would be sound weird, but it's kind of a way to wake you up. <laughs> You're fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> or or with a uh, with gas ma- with the uh, gas uh, gas grenades. So in the course itself, I told you 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 barely have rights. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you barely have rights. And they would do like all kind of nasty shit for you. So let's say you're 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 outside. You're not in a, in a base. You're outside. You learn in navigation. So it looks like this: you sleep in the bush, you eat some, you know, preservatives and, and tuna and those stuff and bread. You learn your your you learn from the map. And when you go to sleep for a few hours, so they might wake you up with the flashbang with some gas and those stuff. You start choking. You pick up your stuff. <laughs> You pick up your backpack and your gear in a minute, and just and and you and then starts the the and then the day starts. Like this is the good morning. You're fucking you're just, crazy, dude. You know, you're legit. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking. And, and think about that when you when you when you get waking up so many times by flashbangs. Um, so waking up in civil life is much easier, you know. The alarm clock I mean, is I on. guess. Like, I, 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 I guess, man. Just fucking set an alarm on your phone. I, I don't see the need for a flashbang. It's just. Uh, what the fuck, dude? I just I think about it. I remind, and I was. It was so fucking funny, man. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is. What is it? What is it like? Is it um. Is it like in video games? Does it, do you hear like ringing and your sights all fucked up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you kind of uh, stunned. Yeah, yeah. I guess it makes sense. What now? Can a yeah. can a flashbang hurt you? Like if you were to take a flashbang and hold on to it, would that hurt you? Yeah, it will. Your fingers will uh will be cut off. Oh, but you know, in in what situation? Like all these have like, all these stuff uh, have safety mechanisms. So for a flashbang to to actually explode, so before there's like a safety mechanism that if it's being held to a hand, it will not. Okay. There's like first uh, safety, a uh, one safety that goes off only when it's thrown in the air specifically. So you're pretty good to go. Okay. Just don't hold explosive kids. Don't yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll make a note. Uh, I'll make a note. Don't hold flashbangs. Okay. 
don't don't hold any any explosive. You shouldn't. Okay. You shouldn't. Thank so you. I'm going on with my notes. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. About about the course, I think. Do you have like questions about the course, something specifically? I I want to hear the questions you're going through, or just. Yeah, I mean, I've got a million questions, but let, let's, I keep I keep distracting you. Let's let's go through the questions. Um, I'm almost finished. So, how was the how was the course? Very hard, but again, you just go through it. I mean, I mean, don't be anxious about it. All right, you just go through it. And again, I always thought in my mind, and when when I am I'm there. You're... And it's hard. I always thought it's gonna it's gonna end, and I'm gonna yeah. laugh at it. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. You're sitting here, and you're telling me don't be anxious about the course. But two minutes ago, you're telling me that you get woken up with flashbangs and and gas. <laughs> well, don't be anxious. I, I don't, we're gonna fucking we're gonna funny. fucking bomb you to wake you up. But don't be anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, if 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 you see the reserve training, you know, think about it. When when you go to as a reserve, so you have your career, you you're a student somewhere and those stuff, and we go reserve and we still sleep in bushes and get wake getting waked up by bombs. And I was and I'm not 18 anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Fuck that. <laughs> Word for that. Yeah. So yeah, don't be don't be anxious about it. Okay. Again, in the moment it sucks. After that, you look back at it and you laugh at it, mm -hmm. and eventually it just makes you a lot lot tougher, mm -hmm. much tougher. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I I really you know I would like you to to have this mental toughness and this perspective of life. Like I've been through hard stuff. This one is not that hard. I mean, it comes to my mind every day almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there's yeah there's I, yeah. Right. Um, army skills. So if you are skilled before the army, you can use it, and you you know just just let people know, let people know that you, if you again as we talked about earlier, if you have a degree, if you are engineer in something or a mechanic and you have a profession before you join, tell them they might use you, but if you want to be combat, so you so the chances of you um, using your uh, your expertise is lower, so decide. Um, but it, yeah, it can all totally boost your career. If you are a specialist in doing like a logistics stuff in the army, if you're a combat, so you will not using your, will not be using your degrees, but you can, you know, you get other, other pros. Right. Okay. okay. And if I resonate with terrorists, it's the last question. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do resonate with, with people yeah. for them. Yeah. I deeply do. Switching to civil life. Um, was talking lately with uh, with some other people that I work with. That you know, let's say just finished the army a few months ago, and I always ask like, how was the switch to civil life? Mm -hmm. And Thomas, um, as soldiers before they before they finish the to the the course, I I mean the term, you know, all the service, they just yo, know, I just want I want to go to civil life again, you know, be civilian and have my beard and hair. And doing the stuff I like and drink and get fucked up, and then they switch, and they don't like it. Yeah, because because of kind of some of the of the pros that I said before. I mean, you are much tougher than everybody else, and you have a different perspective, and nobody knows what you have been through, mm -hmm. so they don't even out, don't know how to approach it, mm -hmm. right? So so having a a good uh, let's say if you're a combat and you have your team, it's very good to maintain relationship with your team. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and slowly start meeting up with new people and understand that people will not know what you've been through, mm -hmm. and you need to know how to work, work with yourself. Yeah, for me, it's not it's not easy to find a spouse that can you know handle all, all the stuff that they carry from the army, and it's been like years now. And mm -hmm. sometimes I wake up terrified at night. Yes, it happens. Yeah, yeah. I'm not perfect. Yeah, you no. Know? And it's not always the, that easy to find a spouse that can handle this. Yeah. All right. So. Again, I'm not sugarcoating anything for you. Mm -hmm. It might be like this, mm -hmm. right? And I want for everybody who has a service to have the, you know, the best life, but people will not know what you've been through mm -hmm. and they don't know how to ask and how to approach. But, but again, for, your, for someone who knows his own worth, 
it will just it will just do miracles for your life, I believe. Okay. And I'm finished with the official questions with Mark and everything. And do we have uh, some uh, audience questions anyway? Do I have some questions? Or the audience, yeah. Well, I told you I put up that thing and I got it taken down. But yeah, I had I had people ask me, you know, the basics one. You know, how many how many how many terrorists have you killed? <laughs> That's the first one. Mm-hmm. How, how many people has he killed? And but it, well, we talked about that the first one. You said what? We need to go through this again. Yeah, I that, mean, we've we, been we, doing the first. We, episode. we talked about that the first one. It's you don't you don't really you know it's you don't know it's it's very rare that you have a confirmed kill, right? You True. said unless you're a sniper, unless you literally pull the trigger and watch the guy's head explode. You know you don't you don't have a <clears throat> a confirmed kill, but you. You set up bombs, right? So, I feel like you would you you would be able to know if you had a confirmed kill, right? You know, if you see a bunch well, of fucking terrorists going and you like beeping. Well, um, they they might the the explosions themselves. Oh, well. Anyway, when you explode a bomb on someone, you still gonna shoot at the same point like 20 people shoot it immediately after it goes up yeah yeah and just you know it will be like just ensure that everybody's dead yeah right? yeah so so again fog of war tons of dust tons of noise and um yeah you can pull the trigger i, I mean on the bomb itself you can yeah you can yeah what um so what What's it like seeing a bunch of like dead bodies? Because I've I've never seen a I've never seen a dead person. Mm. Well, it depends on what situation, right? And, but if it's like you know, you're in the middle of a fight and a combat, and you see this, and you just you know go past it, they're like, oh well, yeah, oh well, awesome. But if you have some time, actually, you know. Uh, let's say in uh, it's this one I I quote from other the other teams like the more more seniors at the I mean like to Lebanon War the second and they say that in Lebanon specifically like every time it's every place it's a little bit different but if, when you go to Lebanon so we were they were in combat and they would uh, no it's the the combat is done and they keep on walking to their destination and when they see the bodies so they actually you know they look at it and they're like actually pretty impressed you know they're geared up mm-hmm. and this is their magazines and they have some grenades and they actually look at at the body and they're pre- pretty impressed mm-hmm. but it very depends but i had other friends you know if a terrorist if a terrorist you know just got one of their guys and shot at him is he like you know right now he's being uh rescued in a helicopter or something so the hatred is big you know they must might double tap it yeah know, those kinds of- yeah yeah, but it's, it really doesn't mean that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you. I feel like you maybe get, you get, you get a little detached, in the, in the fog of war. You know, you can't get, you can't get caught up in it, right? You gotta, because you gotta keep, yeah. you gotta keep functioning. You gotta keep operating. Yes, it's true, and. Seeing uh, dead bodies in, in civil life when I was a, a kid, let's say, I was not in the best neighborhood. So this is was this is was like much more terrifying. Of being a kid? And when you're a kid and you see this stuff. When when did you when did you see this as a kid? Well, so I was I'm not in the best city in the world and not not in the best uh, neighborhood. <laughs> In, in the same city yeah and like our neighborhoods is like uh, every neighborhood is known to their own shit mm-hmm. so mine is known for the for the nasty you know street drugs kind of and the neighborhood that i was actually going to school in to high school was known that is like it's it looks good like the neighborhood, the neighborhood itself is like clean and nice but there's a lot of you know uh, uh just criminals um, you know families whole families of criminals right there and and they have their own weapons, but in Israel it's illegal mm-hmm. to hold the weapons legally. And yeah, they were killing each other like once in every uh, five, four months. It would be like you know someone getting killed. So it's mostly like drug dealers. 
So one day, it was Friday, we were in, say, in school in a exam in history, and we're just hearing an explosion, and all the street is like filled with smoke. So we we jump off the fence, you know, to see to see what what's going on, and we see that someone has exploded the car with the three drug dealers inside. And when when we arrived, like much before the police came, mm-hmm. so we say, oh, you know, the bodies when they are still, you know, still uh twitching and still mm-hmm. kind of alive, but they were totally totally, you know, no limbs, oh. um, totally decapitated and no stuff, yeah. burn like three three uh, degree burns all all around the place. Huh. So this one is much worse, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. God damn, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. The, now, does that stuff? Does that stick with you more than warfare? Like you said, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're terrified. Do, you, is it? What do you remember more? Is it? Is it that stuff when you were a kid, or is it when you wake up? Is it from? Are you thinking about war? Well, I have a, my brain, which is a totally dark place <laughs> to be in. All right. So it's like, I'm, 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 uh, I'm just putting, you know, I, I repress thing. I have this uh, thing of repressing things and only in my late, in like, uh, in when I was 20 already, let's say 22 or something like this. So I, I start actually recovering and talking about, about stuff. Because I had a really, really, you know, smart spouse at the time. We were doing like sessions, and she, you know, she asked me like one time. So when did you, you know, just in a nice session, like when did you lose like your, your virginity? I was like nine. Yeah. And she's like, no, you're kidding. I'm like, no, we like this happened. And she's like, and she's like, oh shit, you, you've been like pedophile. And I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't, I didn't got that. I totally repressed that, those yeah. memories. Yeah. And you know, so I go through my whole life not even thinking about this because it just repressed yeah all right so it's like it's down there yeah. but I, I don't i barely even think about this because i mostly i i even kind of forget this but she specifically she was just very very sharp girl she could, could point at it and help me to recover the memories and handling through this mm-hmm. so all the yeah stuff that i've been through so she totally you know helped me just to recognize it and again she she tried not to panic but when i was like nine yeah <laughs> my virginity and she's like it's not okay <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah that's so i i have this um, thing of repressing stuff um but i'm i'm i would say that the later stuff that happened are have the most uh significance because it's not repressed i still remember this you know mm-hmm. um i gotta go pay <laughs> I think you should go in, my friend. <laughs> I really need to drink less water, dude. No, uh, before, let's say if I know that I'm going to be on video when I don't have a face mask, right? when I'm just a human being, yeah, and I need to go on, on just a photo shoot, I, I dry myself totally. Yeah, I feel like I should probably start doing that before podcasts. I should, I should drink water after. I have, or just cut it, man. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just gonna spice it out. But yeah, I'm... it's so good, it's so good. Um, <laughs> did you say by the way that you had in the past like you were much more of a drinker, like alcohol, or just yeah. water? I mean, alcohol and those stuff. Um, when I was younger, yeah. Um, I never no, no. I mean, even in college, I. Still drank rarely. I, I was always so focused on school and dieting that drinking just got in the way of it. Um, mm. um, I'd say in my early twenties, maybe like no mid twenties. I don't know, like twenty four to twenty six. I was very very depressed, and I, I drank a lot then. But. That was, yeah, that wasn't like party drinking. That was like drink by myself. That was, yeah, you know, depression. You just want to go to sleep. Uh, but yeah, no, I I don't, no, I don't, I don't drink anymore. It's just, it's not for me. I don't, it's, it makes me just 
it makes me not address the problems I need to address in my life. You know, it's, you know, mm-hmm. I, it just makes me take almost like repression. It just makes me take it and just I'll think about it another time. And it's yeah. never that's never once in my life benefited me every, you know, 29 years of living, putting things off and repressing has never once benefited me. I always have to deal with it eventually. And oftentimes it's worse because I put it off. So because of that, no, I, you know, I drink water, I drink a lot of fucking water, but I think, you know, in, uh, in, uh, only in 2019, I started drinking wine. Yeah. And man, these days I only drink wine when I, when I want to drink something. I mean, you know, let's grow up a drink kind of, I'm a drink wine. Oh. Thought, and because thought, of because of one girl that I dated, and it always starts like this, like this girl, one at a time. And and we were drinking, you know, we were at their place, you know, drinking beer, having fun, like it was super late. Mm-hmm. And then she was she asked, You want to get, get some wine? I'm like, you know, I'm not a wine drinker, but yeah, let's go. And she should, so she pours me some and I'm gonna drink it like vodka. I'm like this. Oh. And God. Yeah. And she's She's like, what the fuck did you just do? What is up with you? What's the matter? You know, are you broken? What the fuck? No, nobody drinks wine. Like, and then she told me, you need like to pour it and smell it smell and it. kind of wear it kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm here for the buzz. Yeah, I'm here for the and party. The I'm here for the, I'm not, I'm not here. For, yeah. 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 My friends would always like, they'd always want to get like different beers or different alcohols. And they'd be like, doesn't this, t-? I'd be like, it all tastes like shit. It's alcohol. It tastes like shit. Like I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the feelings. Like I'm not, I'm not here to. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. If I want something that tastes, good, you know, I'll get a really good meal. Like I don't. If I'm gonna drink, yeah, no, I'm, with, I'm with you. Just boom, down it. Fucking, let's go. Let's get, the, <laughs> let's get the party started. <laughs> yeah, get it in my fucking Enjoy brain. <laughs> but yeah, it's, well, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I just, I drink more lately. You know, just because wine is something, first of all, you know, it just, it's not like the process of, of getting wasted because in vodka, you're like, oh, I need to go through 10 shots until I'm fucking drunk. But wine, I'm just, you know, pour me a glass and, and I'm in the thing that I do, I write commercials. So it's actually it really opens my mind. You know, it's actually, it's very helps me, helps me um, to do my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. So if I'm nervous, so I might, you know, just drink two glasses, let's say. I mean, I don't recommend it, right? Yeah, don't, I, I don't. I don't want you we, to. We don't, don't go. Don't don't, you know. don't start drinking a lot. I don't want you to get. I don't want you to get caught up in that because that that can be, you know. I mean, you're you're an adult. You know that, but yeah, it's alcohol slippery. It can, you know. It start. Yeah. It starts with I. I just have a class every night. You know, it's not much. I have two glasses, and the next thing you know, you fast forward five years and. You're waking up and you're shaking. And you got to have a beer. It's you know it can. But the thing is, just you know, because I may I meet so many CEOs, so I understood that drinking for and mostly for Europeans, it's much less overrated. Like like in our place, you know, let's say you know, like the the Scottish and Irish uh, stereotype was very fucking true. They drink beer every fucking day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Italians, they might drink wine more than two glasses every fucking day, and they're not excited about this at all. Yeah. You know, they don't think they exaggerate because they actually do this pretty often. Yeah. And or you know, or just other CEOs, which is who were are from US, but you know, it's you know, it's not good. Who tell me, you know, let's just drink some some vodka and I'm gonna go to sleep. I just need some vodka to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I'm like, yeah, it's not good for you. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, and yeah, for me, I know that I, when I drink it, I, I develop a habit very quickly. You know, it's, I had it, you know, you get drunk and you sleep so good. And then the next night it's like, oh, maybe I just have one. And it, for me, I know that I'm not very good at controlling it. That's why I don't. But I have a lot of friends that can have a glass of wine every night and they're just fine. You know, they're completely right. fine. They're healthy. They have jobs. They have wives. They have families. And they enjoy a glass of wine at the end of the day. 
I'm jealous. I wish I had that power. I don't. I do not have that power. It's if I start drinking, I'm gonna need like three bottles, and I'm gonna want to fucking go party, you know. Could take, no, could... But but if you develop habits so fast and you're consistent, man, it's like a superpower. I'd wish. <laughs> I'd wish I had that. To develop habits. To develop habits fast and you know, and be actually very very consistent about that. Oh yeah, well that's a, that's the that is a it is a superpower in that I can do good habits. Exercise every right. day, meditate every day, diet, do a podcast every day. Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Is it's meditate. is I can use These it. Days? What you meditate every day? Every goddamn day, man. You know that when I was down the hall with all the PTSD and nasty shit, mm-hmm. it's the best thing that it's the best habit that I grabbed. Yes, it's yes. the best one. And I would do this. I would. I totally. I broke down. You know some uh, stuff that uh, Tony Tony Robbins talks about about yeah, meditation. Yeah. The thing is, change your breathing, change your state. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And so I was. You know, as the alarm uh, goes on, so I just turn it off. He immediately go uh, stand, and he does like this. So he he takes his arm up and does like mm-hmm. <laughs> like this. And then, and he has like a flow, which I totally recommend. Tony Robbins meditation. You'll find it on YouTube, like in first place. Beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful. And I was doing this every fucking day. And from being in, being in, you know, the down the hall doing all the nasty drugs and the hard drugs. Sure. I would just build slowly and start running marathons and those shit. Mm-hmm. So. I, I bow to Tony. I bow to Tony. <laughs> Don't bow to me, man. I'm, 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 it's, people like you who actually does this. It's fucking amazing. It, well, the thing is, is like I have to do it because if I don't do it, I'll turn, I'll turn to alcohol. I'll turn to drugs. Like I need, I'm someone that like I need, I need to escape. Like I need to get to a different place every day. And, it can either be through drugs and alcohol or it can be through work out really hard, run, lift weights, go take a cold shower and then meditate. It's, I get all my endorphins flowing. I, you know, I focus on my breath. I go to a very like Zen place, but what it is at its core is it's, it's a need for me to experience a different state of consciousness. And it's, it took me a long time to accept that that's what I need. Um, it finally, I realized I was like, you know, instead of trying to fight the desire to go somewhere else, why don't I just try to channel it? And so I channel it into, into exercise, to dieting, to meditation, to doing a podcast, talking to other people. Um, cause if I don't do it, it comes out in the form of eating a lot of food, drinking, you know, it's just, so yeah, it's like, I ha it's, it's compulsive. I have to do it. Like I have to do, I have to do these things. It's uh, yeah. Cause otherwise if I don't, I'll fucking go crazy. <laughs> so I, ha- I have to meditate. Have you seen the movie by uh, Tony Robbins? I'm not your guru. No, but I've heard of it. Beautiful, beautiful. And I was like crying. Yeah. Fully blown crying when I saw this, like yeah. this few moments in there. Beautiful movie. And he says there that you know, people who have been through shit, and almost everybody has been through some hard shit in his life. I mean, come on. Yeah. In every age. Everybody. Being go through hard. Everybody right? has. From yeah. their own. And he says, you know, n- not not underestimating yourself, but it's not the experience, but it's what you do with this when it mm-hmm. happens, when it's over. Mm-hmm. And, and Jaco talks about this a lot. You need to build yourself. And Jaco even talks about it in when some you know when a teammate die or a relative dies you have to build yourself mm-hmm. and he says discipline no, dis- right discipline. but it's kind of but it's kind of yeah i mean yeah. it's kind of rituals i mean i i mean it's I, I thought that meditation is just a bs thing most of my life right mm-hmm. and then things turn sideways and I was down the hall, starting doing this, and it's actually built my, me up. Yeah. 
So, you know, if I, if I, if we can send a message to your audience, it be everybody who goes to tough shit then it's still in his head. You know, he thinks about it and it hurts his, uh, his everyday routine and go through regular stuff. Do this yeah. in the, the morning, win the morning. You will, you will win your day. Yeah. You're... And you can, go very people go through hard stuff. Yeah. Horrible stuff. Yeah. And do this meditation thing. And, and it's miracles. It's it, miracles. It, it really is. It's There's nothing like it. It There's nothing. You know, drugs and alcohol, they can make the pain go away for a little bit. Um, but meditation is weird. And not only does it make the pain go away, but it doesn't just... It's like alcohol is like putting a Band-Aid on something. And meditation is like... Meditation is like stitches. You go in and like you actually fix the thing. It's, you know, it's, it's like if you can't sleep because, you know, your roommates are fighting. Alcohol is like putting in earplugs. Meditation is like going and talking to your roommates and being like, what's the matter? Like, let's talk this out. It, it, it really is. It's, and what's so beautiful about it is it's available to everyone. You don't need oh, it. Oh yeah. You don't. You don't even need it. People, oh, yeah. people are always like, "Well, I don't know how to meditate. You know, what's the best guided meditation? What guided meditations help? Sure, but you don't need them. You don't need it. My first, my first like five years of meditation. I don't think I used a guided meditation until probably I had been med. I started meditating in two thousand eight. I don't think I used a guided meditation until two thousand fourteen or fifteen. It's been like seven years. Like, you don't just there's no right or wrong way to do it you know there's no it's not like exercise or you go start lifting weights like you might hurt yourself if you don't know the correct form you might hurt yourself you know with right. meditation it's no dude you 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 cannot fuck it up you can't what works for you doesn't work for someone else so some people are all about the breathing some people are about you know you light a candle and you stare at the flame other people are about you you know you constantly ask yourself a question. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Some people, it's, you think about things like, uh, you know, what is it like to experience nothing? Or what was it like before me? Or what will life, you know, you think of questions that try to confuse the mind. Other people is, you try to go without thinking. Other people is you focus on inhalation, exhalation. There's no, and those are just ones that I'm naming. There's no, there is no right way. Just if and it, whatever you do will work for you, probably. Yeah, just figure yeah. it. Just literally, just sit there and just you you just start. Just start. Just play with shit around. It's just your mind. Just sit there and some maybe you don't even do anything. Just watch. Literally, just watch. Like you're watching a movie. Just watch your life. Like there's a million types of meditation, and it's available to everyone. It can't be taken away from you. It's absolutely free. If someone's charging you money to meditate, they're fucking you over. Don't give them any money. It's, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Well, there are people that do that. They sell meditation techniques for only $2,000. I'll teach you how to meditate. Get fucked. Fuck you. It's, no, it's, and the thing is, is it's the most, for me in my life, it is the most beneficial thing I've ever done. Above everything you know what behind it i would say exercise and sleep but number one thing for me is if i meditate in the morning i can't have a bad day you you can't ruin my day you can try but you can't ruin my day i'm 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 in a different place you know i mean it's fucking amazing and you control your own energy you don't depend on other people to yeah. give you fucking compliments or yeah. something to, to feel good. Yeah. You start your day, you already feel fucking good. Yeah, 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 you know. You, you know, I'm not like crazily happy, right? I don't, yeah, yeah, I it's don't not, go It's, it's not like, me. oh my God, I'm so happy. It's not that, it's not, it's not, it's yeah. not sad, it's not I, happy. It's something else entirely. You're over both of them. Yeah, it's just, and the thing that you can actually just toggle on and off your energies, and feel pretty, you know, if you, let's say, feeling grateful, 
if you do those breathing techniques or your routine and you think about being grateful, so eventually you'll be fucking pretty grateful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You don't need to wonder about this. It's it's much more simple than it looks. Yeah, it really is. It's just yeah, that's one thing I uh, that was one type of meditation I did for a while was like I would just think about how great everything was. And you know, at first glance you're like whatever, it's what's great. Oh my god. But so for me, I think about like think about all the bad times you've been through and now realize that they're not here anymore. You know, think of every time you've been sick and your throat hurts and you just think, oh, my God, I wish I didn't have a sore throat. Right now, I don't have a sore throat. Think about every time you've been too hot or too cold or you haven't slept enough or you've had a sunburn or you've been in a breakup or you got fired or, you know, you didn't have a place to sleep or you're fuck you hated your roommates or whatever. None of those things are here right now. It's like right now I'm in like a room. I'm in clean clothes. Like I'm going to go eat food after this. I went to the gym this morning. I meditated. It everything's very very good. Like it's very but you have to remind your you have to you know gratefulness is it's not always there. Like when something really good happens, it's very easy to be grateful because you've been handed this new thing. But when you get in a rut of, you know, just going through everyday life, blah, 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 it's very easy to not be grateful. But you just got to pause and be like, there was once a point in life where I was wishing for something and it's all I wanted. And now I have it and I don't even think about it, you know? And it's, yeah. Totally true. Yeah. Totally true. And and from the other side of the of the perspective, hurting people insulting people talking shit about people or or killing people is the lowest mm-hmm. one can get mm-hmm. i mean get there if if there's like my colleagues are gossiping about someone and or they're talking shit about someone i can tell them hey, you don't have to be on my table you can go to the other corner to talk shit you can talk shit outside in the smoking zone don't t- talk shit yeah, next to me thank you that Bye. yeah <laughs> like that. that is it is yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, you know, yeah, when, when you meditate more, yeah, it's, so you kind of see things like that for what they are. You, you realize that they pull you down. Like, normal, everyday life, you might not realize it, but if you start meditating more and you become more grateful and you, you know, begin to love yourself and you begin to try to, you know, heal your own traumas. And then other people, you know, stuff will start to stick out more. You see people being mean to someone. You're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why, why are you doing that? Or, you know, that guy's so fucking stupid. Fuck that guy. No, what, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you bringing that here? You know, it's, well, you, you know, you don't got to like everybody, but you don't need to talk about it either. Oh, yeah. You know, like, like the, the best thing that I'm, I'm looking up to in my future and to be an awesome dad is I, I just want my kids to be grateful eventually, you know, to be grateful for what they have, mm-hmm. for the wealth that I'll build, I'll build for them, and for being healthy, and, you know, not going through hard stuff that kids in the other side of the world go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... Don't have to be a rice farmers. Yeah. They will be in the developed country. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to shoot RPGs. Yeah, it's... You don't have to. Yeah. And don't get trafficked for some nasty shit, and this stuff actually happens, mm-hmm. which is super super sad. But I'm fucking grateful. By the way, morning routine today. I I I, I sent and I skipped mine. And the first thing that that I did this morning is talking to you. It, you talk to me. Beautiful. Yeah, it was. The, it was the. I mean, you know, took care of my cat and and was talking to you. <laughs> so. I, don't, Today I skipped. Well, I think you should go uh, work out or meditate after this. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I need. I have some stuff I need to do for the relocation. I'm a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, need need to get a lot of documents done. So when I finish here, I need to go to a lawyer to do some arrangement. Yeah. <clears throat> really, totally excited, man. Totally excited. Fuck yeah. 
Fuck yeah. Well, there's... I pick up this energy, like uh, kind of the energy sparkle in my butt. I just want to go and do stuff and I'm so fucking excited. Uh, yeah, <laughs> welcome to the other side of the world. Yeah, yeah, you get excited. Yeah, man, that's, that's the other thing is get excited. Yeah, that, like meditation, like it will get you excited about everyday shit. I'm every morning I wake up and I'm so excited to do a podcast. Like simple shit. I wake right. up and I'm always like, fuck yeah, like I'm doing a podcast today. And by the time the podcast is over, I'm like, okay, good. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm tired. I'm tired of talking. I want to go lay down. And I wake up the next morning and I meditate and I'm like, fuck yeah, it's time to do a podcast. And it's just it's very simple. Yeah. It's I was gonna say, let's um let's wrap this up, but um for you to meditate let's wrap it I, w- I want you to meditate yeah there's some <laughs> quote i saw it was like everyone should meditate for 20 minutes a day unless you don't have the time in which case you should meditate for an hour oh yeah so if you say you don't have the time oh, yeah. that means you really need to meditate you you need it so bad <laughs> yeah so that's yeah, that's you what need- you have to do that's what you, you take take five minutes and meditate and then go do all your shit Word for that. It's the time for yourself, not for your spouse, not for your kids, yes. not for family time. Yeah. It's for yourself to your own worth and yes. to be fucking amazing, amazing people. Yeah. And I think the people who listen to this are already amazing, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Fuck yeah, they are. Yeah, there's a... I would say it's for them. I mean, <laughs> for you, but love, you everything. Love, everyone. <laughs> love from T. It's a... Uh, yeah, I saw last quote i saw something about meditation and it was like it was like a picture of like the battery on your phone right and it's like one percent and it says you wouldn't let your phone get to one percent don't let yourself get to one percent you know when your phone starts to die you go charge it when it's at like 80 percent if you feel yourself and your soul and your heart if you're at 80 percent don't don't let yourself go down to zero. Fucking treat yourself like you treat your phone. Plug it in. Fucking take care of yourself. You know? Hell yeah, man. I, I have so much energy to go through my day now. I'm just going to do some shit. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> now, uh, I hope you don't get coronavirus. I hope you don't... don't uh, um, what I, I will already tell it to, to a colleague if I'm kissing a prostitute in, in Philippines, I'll kiss with a condom, it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Less what? dark joke for today. See ya. <laughs> all, right, all right, dude. I'll, hey, man, I'll message you. Thanks for doing I'll send you the link. All right, peace out. All right, dude. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.